Hey guys, listen, just because I am biased does not mean that I am wrong. Real quick, before you guys keep watching the video, make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button. So I'm looking at um, PFF's rankings for the all 32 quarterbacks headed into the 2021 season. And I mean, the list itself isn't too crazy, but when I see Lamar at number eight here, like it, 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 it doesn't make much sense to me. And I, and obviously that's coming from bias, but at the same time, I think it would have been more realistic to put Lamar at number five here instead of eight. I'm gonna go through the list real quick, one through eight. Number one's Patrick Mahomes. Number two is Tom Brady. Number three is Aaron Rodgers. Number four is Russell Wilson. Number five is Deshaun Watson. Number six is Josh Allen. Number seven is Dak Prescott. And number eight is Lamar Jackson. So, like I just said, Lamar should be number five on this list at least. Like, definitely number five. They got Patrick Mahomes at number one. I mean that makes sense. You know he's Patrick Mahomes, so I, I'm I I could I could see them having him number one on this this list. He's one of the best quarterbacks with one of the best surrounded by one of the best teams and some of the best weapons, so it makes sense. Number two, Tom Brady. Eh, I mean I have some opinions on that, but at the same time, I mean he's won seven Super Bowls, so you know th like you can't. There's not really much of an argument to be made just coming up with the Super Bowl and the team the entire team is pretty much coming back at this point number three is Aaron Rodgers and eh, as an in, yeah I mean yeah yeah Aaron Rodgers as an individual I could see it but at the same time this whole um, offseason there's been this like ongoing um, drama that the media is perpetuating talking about Aaron Rodgers and the Packers having beef and he wants to leave and so we don't even know if Aaron Rodgers is going to play with Green Bay next season I think he will but there's still questions on if he will and then you know some people I, even I, claim I, I even predicting that he might so. sit out the season I don't think I don't think that's going to happen but some people are predicting that and then even if Aaron Rodgers was to go to a different team there's no guarantee that 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 team that he would go to would be the right fit or that he would have like an extreme amount of success because what if he goes to a new team that and every and it's just like a complete nightmare but i mean at the same time i still understand why they would have aaron Rodgers at number three on this list number four russell wilson that's reasonable that's reasonable russell wilson in my opinion i think he's in his prime he's playing better than ever but the only ish but i don't know how next season's gonna work out for him that much though because you know, he kind of threw his offensive lineman under the bus over the offseason. And there was all that drama saying that he was supposed to leave the team, which didn't end up happening. So I'd imagine there would be some sort of tension in the locker room, which could affect performance. But I mean, at the, and maybe not. At the same time, at the end of the day, he, he got DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett to throw the ball to. So I, I, he's, he's going to be fine. So that that so one through four makes makes sense. One through four is reasonable. One through four makes sense. Here's where I start to have an issue, man. Number five, Deshaun Watson, and I like Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is elite, but to put him at number five on this list doesn't make sense. I mean, look at the beginning of this article by PFF. They themselves say, okay. PFF's quarterbacks rankings are based on grading every player on every play and tapping into multiple years of data to project future performance. We go beyond just last season's performances and grade and the grading works to isolate each quarterback's performance from that of his supporting cast, making for more effective projections. Okay. Now, when they say supporting cast, do they mean offense and defense or they or do they just mean offense? Because I didn't watch many Texans games last year, but the person I know who's a Texan fan, they kept saying that their defense was trash last year. So I don't, eh, I don't know, I don't know about that. His supporting cast, but another thing, another issue I have with that is the fact that do is Deshaun Watson even playing next season? Like, how could you have him so high ranked, uh, uh, even though he's elite? How could you have him so highly ranked on this list? when it's still up in the air if he's gonna play next season like I, I don't know if that's been confirmed or not yet because we all know he's trying he was trying to leave the texans and go to another team but 
we don't know if that's going to happen, but we do know that the Texans are preparing for, you know, finding their next quarterback. And then on top of that, those allegations came out. Now, I don't know if those allegations are true or not. I'm not going to I'm not here to, to discuss or 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 try to predict if it's true or not. I'm that's not my business. I'm going to just sit back and let that play out on its own. I don't want to pick sides either way. But still, at the end of the day, when you combine um, the allegations that came out, which now makes a lot of teams not want to touch him because a lot of teams, whenever a controversy comes around a player, a lot of teams really don't want to touch that player, I guess, because they think it's bad press and whatnot. So I don't know if any, I doubt any team this offseason is going to take Deshaun Watson because I think they would have done it already. I think they would have traded for him already, but... But, uh, you know, so when you combine the fact that he he's pretty much had a falling out with the Texans and then also the allegations conveniently came out when they came out. So now no other team really wants to touch him, even if they wanted them. Uh, we, I mean, is Deshaun Watson even going to play next year? He might sit like he really might sit out next year. Like, so how could you how could you have him so highly ranked on based off of future projections when we don't even know if this guy's going to even even play one snap next season we, we don't know what's going to happen to, to Deshaun Watson when it comes to his future right now and then and then on top of that uh, an issue I have with this is another issue I have with this is the fact that when they're ranking these quarterbacks they're not when I'm I'm going to read the um the opening paragraph from the article again we they say pff's quarterbacks rankings are based on grading every player on every play and tapping into multiple years of data to project future performance now when you talk about future performance are you talking about your overall impact on the game in addition to your numbers or are you just talking about your numbers because with all due respect to deshaun watson Deshaun Watson, he, he's coming off of a season where he just had a bunch of empty calories, as, as Shannon Sharp would say. Like, he, it was about a bunch of empty calories, man. He Like, he balled out. He was, in, as an individual, he was very impressive. But his team won, like, four games. So, at the, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's one of them situations where it's like his team, his team isn't elevating even though his play is elevating. And I think that should I think that should be seriously considered in this list is the overall team's production, right? Because they say supporting cast. So if you say supporting cast, but Deshaun Watson isn't a capable of getting the same results that Lamar gets when it comes to shouldering the load and and carrying this team to a lot of wins you know i just i I don't i don't think deshaun should be above lamar on this list and deshaun's excellent i like deshaun but at the same time i don't think he should be above lamar on this list again lamar as a starter is 30 and 7 he has won 30 games and only lost seven games in a regular season so far like he gets results it doesn't look it doesn't always look like the the prototypical quarterback but at the same time he still gets results and he and this is he's gotten these results while having one of the most mediocre receiving cores in the league no offense but it's but it's true statistically like that you know like they're, they're like the weakest receiving team in the league receiving core in the league so to me it doesn't make sense to have deshaun watson above it above lamar here because if you say supporting cast, why don't you also include um, the player's impact on the team overall? And if you're talking about impact on the team overall, Lamar has to be number five on this. Lamar should be number five on this list. Because at, at the end of the day, if you take Lamar off of the Ravens, we wouldn't have won. We wouldn't have won six games last year. There's no way we would have won six games last year. And the year before that, we probably would have only won like nine games. And his rookie year, we was on pace to only win like six games. Like we, like you, this needs to be accounted for. And plus, when it comes to their projections, are they also factoring the factoring in the fact that Lamar has accomplished all that he's accomplished while not having a a um a bona fide number one receiver yet, while not having that guy yet? 
he was doing this with a, a receiving core that has some of the highest drop rates in the league like again as the rate the, the ravens last season we ranked like what like sixth or seventh in the league when it comes to um the most drop passes like lamar jackson out of all starting quarterbacks he led the league in um among starting quarterbacks in percentages of his passes that were dropped with 7.5 percent and he's still getting these amazing results that he gets so I think that needs to be considered in in the the multiple years of data that they're talking about to project future performance. If you factor in the fact that he was able to accomplish all of that while at the same time not having the best offense around him, while at the same time having a, a offensive line that was, when it came to pass protection last year, they were really shaky. And one of our best offensive linemen, Roddy Stanley, he, he got injured and he was he was MIA for for a good a good chunk of the season. Like like you need to factor if you're really taking if you're really taking multiple years of data and supporting cast and all this other stuff to in every play to factor into all this Lamar absolutely should be above Deshaun Watson here so again no disrespect to Deshaun Watson but I, I just think that them having him at number five it it, 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 it I think Deshaun should be high on this list but number five I, it doesn't make sense to me Number six is Josh Allen. This really doesn't make sense to me. And I like Josh Allen. I think I think Josh Allen's going to ball out. At the pace Josh Allen is going at, now that he has Cole Beasley, the likes of Cole Beasley and Stephon Diggs to throw to, I think, hey, we, we might we might see a Josh Allen get an MVP in like another one or two years. It's very much possible. But at the same time, to, to factor, to put him above Lamar on this list, also doesn't make much sense to me because again i'm gonna go back to the the first paragraph in this article they said what's what we're grading players based on every play tapping into multiple years multiple years of data keeping my emphasis on multiple multiple years of data and they're saying they go beyond the last season performances okay that's that's reasonable but last time that I checked, what, wasn't Josh Allen underperforming before last season once they got Stefan Diggs and Cole Beasley? I'm going to, I'm going to, like, as I'm speaking, I'm, I'm going to check right now. Like, I'm, I'm going to check right now. I'm checking right now. In 2019, Josh Allen completed 58% of his passes, had 3,000 yards. 20 touchdowns and nine interceptions. It's decent. It's decent. It's decent. But again, 58% of his passes, it, it's looking, it's looking shaky. And then also he had 500 rushing yards and nine rushing touchdowns. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty solid, pretty solid. But again, not an amazing season, not a top 10 quarterback season. His rookie year, he completed 52% of his passes. Now, again, he's, he was a rookie, so I don't really want to put too much emphasis on his rookie numbers. 52%, 2,000 yards, um, 10 touchdowns, 12, 12 interceptions. That that does look too good. But then also he had um, 600 rushing yards and eight rushing touchdowns. But the point I'm trying to make is prior to last season, Josh Allen, eh, it, it, it wasn't. He wasn't looking very impressive. And they claim they tap. They're tapping into multiple years of data. But if you tap into multiple years of data when it comes to Josh Allen, he's only just now starting to play at an elite level after one season. So how could you have him ranked number six on this list when he's only had one elite season so far? Lamar Jackson came right out the gate, guns blazing. Right out the gate, guns blazing. Like, he came right out the gate just winning. Just winning. In his second season, when, when Josh Allen was still struggling and was only completed 58% of his passes and had 20, 20 passing touchdowns, 9 interceptions, and then, like, 9 rushing touchdowns, Lamar literally was the MVP. He had an MVP season. He threw for 3,100 yards. He rushed for 1,200 yards. He had seven rushing touchdowns. He threw 36 passing touchdowns. And he was completing 66% of his passes. 
66% compared to Josh Allen's 58. And mind you, this is why Lamar still did not have any any um, elite receivers around him. He didn't have the number one guy that he was already pro producing these outrageous, these these out of this world numbers and and and, and winning, carrying this team to a, a 14 and two record. He was dominating. There were games during that season where they didn't even have him playing the fourth quarter. They were winning by so much it didn't matter, which is why his num his numbers could have had his his numbers could have been even bigger if he was playing those all those games and if he played the last game of the season so while i understand the wanting to rank josh allen highly because he he had a massive improvement this year if you're saying that you're basing this based off of multiple years of data it doesn't make sense to me because again josh allen has not yet proved that he can have multiple years playing at an elite level i think he will don't get me wrong i think he will but he hasn't officially done it yet lamar jackson has already played at an elite level for multiple years now he came right out the gate in his rookie season when joe flacco hurt his hip and 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 saved that entire season like, and and dragged us to a 10 and 6 record on a season where we were on pace to only win like five or six games which which his performance literally saved John Harbaugh's job. There's no way John Harbaugh should have still had a job had they were kept going at the pace they were going before they decided to start Lamar. Then in his second season, his first full season as a starter, as a starter, he 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 becomes the MVP. He he completely dominates the entire league. That's multiple years of data of Lamar Jackson dominating. Since Lamar Jackson has come onto this team, we, we are arguably the best rushing team of all time. We are we are the we have the highest point differential ever. Like I think if I, I I haven't checked this stat in a while, but I think last time I checked in the past three seasons, we have a point differential of like five hundred and like sixty. Like we 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 not only are we winning a lot of games, we are dominating a lot of games. So it doesn't make sense to, to me to have Josh Allen here. Now, don't get me wrong. I think Josh Allen's going to keep improving and keep playing at an elite level. Now that he has the likes of Cole Beasley and especially Stephon Diggs to go to, I definitely think that's going to matter. But at the same time, what do you mean? What like I don't believe them when they say, oh, they're basing this based off of every play and multiple years of data and supporting cast. Because based off of multiple years of data josh allen hasn't proved that he's consistent yet technically because he hasn't had multiple seasons playing at this level yet he only had one season so far of doing this so that's not fair to put him above lamar when it comes to this you know like to me it just doesn't make much sense like i you know and don't give me you know don't give me wrong i still think josh allen's gonna do good but i just it just doesn't make I don't think Josh Allen should be above Lamar on this list. Especially when you're basing it off of future projections. And hey, if we want to base it off of future projections, and granted, I'm biased, but still, at the end of the day, hey, we just drafted Rashad Bateman. We also drafted T.N. Wallace, which a lot of people believe he's going to surprise a lot of people because a lot of people weren't paying him too much I, I, attention. I not um, because he got like a, a ACL tear or an Achilles tear, Achilles tear or something like that back when he was in college. But this, uh, a lot of people who I don't watch college football, but a lot of people I know who watch college football say that, hey, if he didn't get injured, he would have been a first round pick easily. So, it's, I mean, there's a lot there's a lot of potential of what our of what our passing game might look like this year especially if greg roman doesn't get in the way or if we get rid of greg roman which to me would be a dream come true i think greg roman is is, is good but i think he's very limited because he's just not balanced and i've said this in multiple videos but you know hopefully even if we keep greg roman hopefully he he stops being stubborn and actually it help helps evolve the off the passing game we also got some some new wide receiver coaches, um, T. Martin and Keith Williams. So hopefully that combined with you know, the new receivers we got, plus Mark Andrews and Hollywood Brown are going to have another year to mature and develop. And they might also take another step forward this year, which is something that I predict is going to happen. You know, so I'm really excited to see what our team does this year. So I think he, they absolutely should be based off based off of projections. The fact that Lamar was able to do so much with so little, 
he definitely should be on higher on this list. Definitely higher than Deshaun Watson and Josh Allen. Now, number seven is Dak Prescott. Now, this is another one that I have a big issue with. Number one reason number one reason I have a big issue with this is Dak didn't Dak Prescott like just break his leg a year ago? Like didn't he like when I watched that clip it looked like his his entire lower leg slash ankle area just snapped. And there's not many athletes who coming off of a, a season and an injury come back in the next season and jump right back into like their old rhythm. Typically it takes a season for them to readjust. So I don't I don't know why they have um Dak Prescott ahead of Lamar on this list. And again, based off of they're saying based off of past performances. Now the the Dak Prescott is elite. And that Cowboys offense, even though it seems like they underperform a lot, they they are they are very stacked. I can't deny the fact that if you if you're looking at Dak Prescott in, in past performances, proving that he's like the Cowboys franchise quarterback, combining that with the fact that they have a, a pretty stacked roster offensively. I mean, they, he, he should be high on this list, but at the same time, Dak Prescott isn't doing any better than Lamar, which is why I think people should consider um, the because when they say supporting cast, I want to know what they mean because they can't mean what I think they mean. What what I think they mean? Because to me, I would assume when you say supporting cast, you would you're you're talking about the ability for that quarterback to elevate the people around him, right? Because when it comes to Tom Brady, that's like Tom Brady's biggest attribute is, is people say that he has a very a very a very interesting ability to elevate the people around him and make everybody feel that much um motivated to win and when i see lamar that's what lamar has been doing he's been elevating this team and elevating the players around him you know elevating this offense an offense that has shortcomings that without lamar it would be much more obvious what the shortcomings are so again like i said the number one reason i think lamar should be ahead of dak prescott on this list too is because you know, again, the main reason above everything is just simply the fact that Dak, Dak Prescott is coming off of a, a season-ended injury. Like, and it's not most athletes; they don't come right back after after one season, and they're just like right back in this in the swing of things. Like, you know, like typically athletes, they need a little time. You know, they need a little time to get back into the groove of things. So I don't think, even though I think he should be high high on this list. I don't think it makes much sense to put him above Lamar when he's definitely going to need a little bit more time, in my opinion, to really get back into the swing of things. And so I, I would put him like if I was to put Dak Prescott on this list, I, I, I'd maybe put him somewhere between like nine and eleven, you know, somewhere, you know, somewhere around there. Just real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna name the last couple off of the off of the top ten. Number nine is Matt Ryan. Number ten is Baker Mayfield. So I would I would probably put Dak Prescott somewhere around there, really. But but what do you guys think? Um, do you guys think um, Lamar is ranked appropriately on this list, or do you guys think that um, they snubbed him? Because like, I mean, again, I could be biased. Well, I am biased, but at the same time, just because I'm biased doesn't mean I'm wrong, man. Like Lamar should be number five on this list. He should like, he should be ahead of Deshaun Watson, Josh Allen, and Dak Prescott. But let me know what your opinions on this are in the comment section below.